Hey there, how's it going? Get up here. The religions of the Eberron universe are a little unusual for most modern fantasy settings you might be familiar with. In most settings, the gods are often the creators of the universe and the mortal beings within them. However, basically all of the gods that are actually worshipped in Eberron are the direct result of situations that happened after the realm of Eberron was shaped, and even the creation of Eberron was little more than a happy accident than anything else, at least to those that live there today. So let's start with the oldest of the divine beings in the Eberron universe, the progenitor dragons. In the beginning, the gods made waffles and all were happy. All you needed was waffles. Eat waffles, fight with waffles, dress with waffles, entire castles were made out of... What, what, what do you mean wrong book? Oh, is, is this the kid's book? Uh, oh. Shoot, okay, let's try this again. In the beginning, there were three powerful progenitor dragons of Kyber, Eberron, and Sybaris. Or Cybris. Ah, hell, I don't know. I'm going to mispronounce things a lot in this video. Through some petty squabbles and experimentation into the fun side of fratricide, the three powerful mega dragon god things became a mix of dead, trapped, and a planet? Although details are sparse, this wasn't exactly a planned thing. Except for some very rare circumstances, the progenitor dragons are not really worshipped by anyone. Literally all the other gods and divine beings of power from this point on were either formed after life had already taken hold upon Eberron, or literally just kind of wandered in from other parts of the multiverse with the same excitement I get when a new restaurant opens up near my house. Wow, I'm fat. So. Let's go over some of the major religions of the world. Some follow the gods that ascended after, some follow foreign powers, and some just follow philosophies. Atheists. I would like to start with one very unique thing in the world of Eberron that isn't really a thing in the other D&D campaign settings, except maybe Dark Sun? In other settings, it's common knowledge that the gods came first. They created the world, and then dabbled with making various types of mortals to suit their needs, blah blah blah. But when the world was basically a giant happy accident, and all the gods either wandered in from elsewhere after its creation, or were themselves once beings that just happened to attain divine status, suddenly some people just see the gods as just another powerful dude around town. Could a god strike down a commoner with lightning while demanding a sacrifice not to? Sure, but so could that fifth level wizard, and frankly an angry wizard is probably more of a direct threat to the everyday person. So out of all of the fantasy settings in D&D, this is one of the few ones that could actually have atheists, and actually have them be right. This is exacerbated by the fact that, as far as anyone can tell, what you do in life doesn't really matter much in death. Unless you gain real special attention of something or someone powerful, your soul will likely just go to Dolur, the plane of the dead, a place of hopelessness and apathy, no matter what you've done in life. Fun, right? Thier. This is the ranking system of the gods made by the dragons, since the dragons are one of the oldest races to do, like, writing and shit. The dragons rank the gods in three ways. The progenitors, the dragon's gods, because race is much, and the Sovereigns, aka basically every other god. The Thyr is sometimes used as a short name for the Dragon Gods of Thyr. The Dragon Gods of Thyr are named Io, Asterinian, Stilabor, Bahamut, Ronepsis, Elazur, Garrix, Alal, Lendus, Tamara, and Tiamat. Each of these dragon gods also has a corresponding constellation in the sky because, just like in real life, astrology is totally legit and will fix your finances if something or other is in retrograde. Very few individuals outside of the dragons themselves worship the Thier religion, or hell, even really know much about its specifics. The Sovereign Host and the Dark Six I won't go into the specifics about what they are and where they came from. There's a long story about dragons, demons, quaddle, etc. Little of this honestly matters in your games. What does matter is that the Sovereign Host and the Dark Six are the most widely worshipped pantheon of divine entities. Like real-world ancient pantheon religions, people rarely worshipped one god over the others. Instead, they respected the entire pantheon at different times. 
A smith might give thanks to Onatar from the Sovereign Host when he finishes crafting a new sword, but then drop a few coins in a gutter for the Traveler from the Dark Six to beg for safe travels. The gods of this pantheon are considered omnipresent, helping to guide and shape the world in its current state. The nine gods of the Sovereign Host are Arawai, the Sovereign of Life, Love, and Fertility, Orion, the Sovereign of Law, Lore, and Magic, Balinor, the Sovereign of Horn, the Wild, and the Hunt, Baldre, the Sovereign of Hall, Family, and Hearth, Dolara, the Sovereign of Light, Honor, and Wisdom, Doldorn, the Sovereign of Strength, Bravery, and the Common Soldier, Kol Karan, the Sovereign of World, Trade, and Wealth, Oladra, the Sovereign of Feast and Luck, and Onatar, the Sovereign of Fire and the Forge. The six gods of the, you guessed it, Dark Six are the Devourer, the Fury, the Keeper, the Mockery, the Shadow, and the Traveler. The Church of the Silver Flame, a divine church that is currently being run by a child that has been touched by the Divine. The Silver Flame is an abstract entity of goodness and law. It came into prominence when an ancient hero by the name of Tira Maron did some awesome things and stuff. Something I'll go into more when I do a video on this specific religion. Although few know this, the Silver Flame was created during the Age of Demons by the Quaddles as some sort of crazy Voltron of goodness out of their spirits. Although not as widely worshipped as the main pantheon, its followers are extremely devout, and the entire country of Thrain converted to a theocracy devoted to the religion. The Undying Court I briefly touched upon this in my elf video. The Undying Court is what happens when you put your elders on such a high pedestal and in such a good retirement home that they just don't die. Like, ever. They just keep baking cookies and living off these eternally lasting pension checks. The elves like it because your great aunt Flo will always be around and knit you a new cardigan. These undying, but not undead, elf people have crazy powers, but don't or can't really leave Aranal, and in fact, almost all of them are in Shea Mordai, aka the City of the Dead. Although, really, it's more of the city of the almost dead, but not quite there yet. Leave me alone, you're not getting your inheritance, I'm still here. The Keepers of the Past The Aranel Elves aren't the only ones that really love their ancestors. The Tyranidal Elves are also kind of big into ancestor worship, just in a slightly different way. The Keepers of the Past are more like worshipped ancestor spirits that may or may not actually be there at any moment. Rather than wrinkly old prune bags walking the streets and complaining the youth of today just doesn't get it anymore, like their Aranel cousins. The Blood of Vol. This one is in the grey area between what makes a religion and what makes a cult, but hey, it was good enough for an entire country to fall back on when they were desperate in the last war, so we'll just throw this one into the religion category. The Blood of Vol is interesting in that it doesn't directly worship any powerful divine beings, but instead states that there is a spark of the divine in all creatures. One of the crazy bits of this religion is that they believe it is such a travesty when the divine spark is lost from the world due to death that they kind of have a lot of necromancers. I mean like, a lot of necromancers. Like, when a worshipper of the Blood of Vol says he just wants to raise a family in peace, He's probably talking about what he's about to do in the cemetery with that poor family that just died in last week's house fire. The Blood of Vol believe that Dolur, the Plane of the Dead, is like a terrifying power sink of the Divine Spark within all mortal beings, and that the best thing one can do is fight against the forces of death. Oh, and they also kind of believe the gods aren't really true gods, but just a bunch of big bully dicks that are browbeating the world and acting how they want. For something often viewed as kind of an evil looking cult, I sympathize with them way more than is probably healthy. They do have several different suborders to the group, including an extremist terrorist organization known as the Order of the Emerald Claw. The Path of Inspiration This is the religion of the region of Riedra or Rydra, I have no idea. In some ways this religion looks much like the Church of the Silver Flame, but a lot more extremist. This religion worships the 
Il Altus, or the Great Spirits, who in reality are the Quarry, evil nightmare creatures from the dream realm of Dalcor, not that the populace know that. Worshippers believe that all other faiths worship evil spirits known as the Altivars, and that only their religion is the good one. Most members of the religion are illiterate, with extreme ignorance of the outside world, and only given knowledge via sermons by the priests by day, and specialized dreams beamed directly into their heads via the monoliths at night. That's right, 24-7 religious propaganda, not being allowed to learn to read, and basically being told what you can and cannot do. Paradise. The Path of Light. This order of meditation, self-inflection, and balance is almost an enigma to the outside world. Composed primarily of the Kalashtar, this order are those affected by the otherworldly dream beings of the Dalcor that aren't secretly evil bastards. Needless to say that these guys are in the minority. The Becoming God Warforged were built for one purpose, it's kind of in their name. So when peace happened and they were suddenly and forcefully given complete freedom with little to no guidance, well, it hasn't gone well. Warforged heard about the stories of ancient divines and thought, hey, I'm pretty handy with a wrench, let's build one of our own. So that's what they're doing. Most of these worshippers gather in the Mornland. They go about gathering materials, parts, and holy items to feed into the great creation. So far, nothing's really happened, but I mean, Gods have been made in crazier ways, right? The Druids. This is definitely something that needs its own video. There are so many orders of Druids from all over. Some with vital and important roles in history, some that just help the harvest come in on time. The largest of the Druid sects is known as the Wardens of the Wood. Primarily human, there are members of many different races among their ranks. The Wardens of the Wood became so influential that during the last war, they became the governing body of the Eldine Reaches after it was abandoned by Ondare. The Order attempts to maintain balance between civilization and nature. They make sure towns have lots of green spaces, don't pollute, serve avocado on toast, and probably universally wear their hair up in man buns. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Okay, that's enough for now. This was supposed to be a brief intro to the religions of Eberron, but there's so much information to break down that even this video is starting to get away from me. I'll try to do more videos in the future that focus on the different religions. If you like what I do, don't forget to hit that like button to subscribe. If you'd like to support my future endeavors so I can actually have time and finances to make nicer looking and fancier videos, think about maybe throwing a buck or two into my Patreon. We also have some really great crowd over at my Discord, people to play games with, both video games and RPGs. You should come hang out sometime. The link is in the description below. Thanks for joining me. I hope you learned something about religions in Eberron for your campaign setting. And as always, stay healthy, stay safe, and have a good one, eh? Waffles. Wa 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 waffles.